Hello, parents and superstars, and welcome back to another edition of Parents Canada Talk Radio. I'm your host, Jason Thompson, and today I'm here with superstar, super co-host, Julia Cowie. Julia, welcome. This is this is your very first live radio appearance, right? It is. But you yes. do voice work, so it's great. Yes, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. You say that now. You wait. You wait uh, until we've deconstructed you as a, a parent over the next hour. Today we're going to be talking about something, a, a, a concept that is near and dear to both of our hearts. Me as a parent of kids who take music lessons, and one child who has no interest in music but actually listens to it, and you who actually is a, uh, I guess, the co-owner of a music studio north of Toronto. So we're going to get into all of that. But first, we've got to get your street cred. Let's talk a little <laughs> bit about you. You know, I, I made the joke before, and you didn't catch it at first, which is, you know, you're, you're, you're mom to four boys. But you're mom to three boys and a husband. So tell <laughs> me a little true. bit. Tell me a bit about your, your mom cred. Uh, yeah, I am a mom of three incredible boys. They are 10, 8, and 4. Do you think anybody ever says that their kids aren't incredible? Like, uh, do they ever start with Probably okay. not. Right. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I'm what, a parent of three average children. Average cool children? Cool. You know, they're okay. <laughs> Uh, no, I think they're pretty awesome. I think they they're keep awesome. me on my feet. They're, you know, they're they're wild. It's well, awesome. They have the greatest haircuts. I think I think of anybody I've ever seen for for okay. parenting. Okay, so, yeah, all right. I'm sure. gonna, they look super cool. Yeah, I think they're pretty cool. I like so them. tell me, you know, when I came in here back in June, I talked about my philosophy, my approach, which was this whole idea of like get my kids to the age of 20, 21 years old, and then they they've got that that kind of cleaving point, right? The the what is it? The the two roads in the wood as they and I chose yeah. the ones last try. So I I want them to be able to make that choice, and really that's my litmus test. If I anything I do with my kids has to kind of progress towards that idea of hey. I want you to get there and get to the place where the choice is not made for you. So for you, what is your kind of overarching approach to parenting? Yeah, I would say very similar to yours. I, I think the kids, uh, I really try and focus on like, what are the core values that I want them to have as adults? And then we kind of like you said, I think you actually said this exact sentence in your first show because I listened to you because you're awesome. Um but you said you kind of work backwards from there, right? How do you want to, what, what core of values do you want them to kind of have as adults, integrity, all of those things, especially for boys, because that's a whole new world for me. And then uh, kind of work backwards from there. And then as a parent myself, I think that, you know, authenticity, that word really sticks in my head a lot. Just trying to let my kids know that, um, you know, I'm a human. I'm parent to, you know, I, I'm just kind of making it up as I go in a lot of ways. And, and so what's, if, that, what's that look like? Like, what does that look like on a day to day basis? That whole idea of authenticity, you know, yeah. anything going on in your life that kind of demonstrates that? Oh, uh, well, I think that uh, I, I think I'm always just very real with my kids in the sense of, you know, if if they're if they're not really kind of going with the the support level of our family, like I'm, I'm huge on support and supporting each other because as much as they need each other's support and they need my support as their mom, I need their support, right? I need their support to kind of help me through the morning and help me through all the things that we have to do and on a regular basis. And so I'm just, I'm very real. Like if I'm, if I'm struggling in my day, if I'm really busy or if I'm, I don't know, feeling really super stressed, I'll let them know like, hey guys, it's been a really rough day for me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to need a little extra support from you and so I, I really try and stay on the ball I guess in that way like just authentic with the kids and it doesn't you know like sometimes you got to step up and be an adult obviously <laughs> but I think that just kind of learning to support each other and and kind of make them very uh, part of that that uh, family dynamic is really important to us as, as parents not just me but that's yeah. a really I, I like that a whole lot that idea of you know as parents we we I think the traditional kind of sense has been, let's keep the kids at arm's length when we're not in a great place. So, you know, I I have a cold. I've had a bad cold that turned into this brutal mm -hmm. ear infection. And I'm my kids were great. Voice. Now, you know, I, I live in kind of multiple households, you know, between the kids and that. But they were texting me all weekend to make sure that I was okay. Can I bring you anything? Yeah. And so they, they know. And, and and I think it's a it's a good thing because that, that vulnerability allows them to see that humanity. Sure. That you don't always have to be like the fake book dad, which is everything's always great all the time yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> right. Absolutely. I completely agree agree with that. I think that the more they can see your humanness, your, um, you know, just the fact that life isn't always 
sunshines and roses and a lot of times it is and it's wonderful but you know we have to kind of be aware of what's going on it's it's empathy parenting I guess is just kind of um, you know bringing that into your parenting core and, and getting the kids to recognize those things it's hard for them to see outside of themselves sometimes especially right. when they're so young right so just trying to get them to okay how did that make your brother feel when you did that to him that kind of style right so yeah that's good. Empathy is it's the it's the word of the week. It seems like in parenting. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've been doing some research on it to look at you know empathy in the way that it impacts people because you can have that kind of empath sense of things. There's the cognitive empathy, which is I know something's wrong and I'm aware of it. Then there's there's the compassionate empathy, which is and then I'm going to to take that on as my own, which is that's mm. a, that's a dangerous thing. And I have at least one of my kids does that right, For which sure. is they can walk into a room and they can instantly sense who's in the most pain and then start to take it as their own. And one of the things I've been really trying to work with her on is the idea of be aware. Be empathetic. Understand where they are, but don't don't eat that because it'll eat you. For sure, which is a really difficult thing to teach teach kids overall. Yeah, no, I I completely agree with that. I see that in my actually in my oldest son. I I have been very much like that. It's something that I've had to work on my entire life. Empathy has always been something I've felt a lot uh, for others, and it's true. You can right. really take that on as your own and and make it. You know, you're t- trying to take their pain for them, but you can't do that. So, it, it's learning. It's working your way through that. Mm-hmm. Speaking of pain, this week in my parenting life, a couple things happened. One was uh, we're painting. Mm-hmm. And so painting the kids' rooms and, you know, you spend months saying, hey, don't bring food into the rooms and that sort of stuff. So, of course, dad moves the furniture and, you know, just it's it's like an onslaught of stuff coming out and you're sitting there going, why why are there crumbled up Triscuits everywhere, <laughs> everywhere? This is why I got a dog. The dog was supposed to find all this stuff for me. But, you know, I'm sure a couple of four-letter words may have passed between my lips. Kids weren't in the house at the time, but that's, that's one half. But I want to talk about something else that happened this week that was kind of interesting. And, yeah. and again, this really kind of demonstrates, you know, the sort of thing we might not talk about a lot as as parents, which is, you know, there was an incident with my, my mid-level child, she's 13, mm-hmm. where someone uh, in in her life uh, was talking with her and uh, actually probably crossed the line a little bit. Mm-hmm. And her reaction to it really demonstrated, I think, uh, a positive outcome. So the person had, had said, my, my, my daughter has shaved her head to look like 11 from Stranger Things. And the person had said, you know, hey, take off your glasses. And she's like, what? No. And 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 she took them off. And, and this person who's an older male said, you know, if you if you uh, if you put a wig on, you would you would look beautiful. Oh, man. And like, first of all, we, we all know, like as every parent, we're just kind of skeeved out by something like that. Yeah. But what really I think the, the really powerful thing happened Next and about 20 minutes later. So the next was she she turned to this person and said, uh, I'm beautiful now and you don't talk to me like that. 13-year-old kid, just yeah. that's good because, yeah. you know, clearly understanding where the boundaries are and what, mm-hmm. what was understandable. And then the 20 minutes later was the way that she positioned it to me. She said to me something like someone was disrespectful to me recently. Mm-hmm. And that was really, really helpful to be able to set the stage and for me to understand where her mindset was and being able to understand that this this is really what I've been really trying to coach with this kid because confidence was a, is something that has been a late late onset element with her and her having that ability to be able to stand up for herself clarity and understand what is appropriate what is inappropriate where the boundaries should lie I thought was a was a great thing so I'm super That's super awesome. proud of her and, and at the same time the ability to, to turn around to me and communicate it to me effectively so that mm-hmm. we could actually make an action plan going forward which we did so that that's all great that's all all wonderful that's stuff awesome. so, yeah, yeah. It's a big heavy week in parenting <laughs> awesome this week though we're going to be talking about something that is near and dear to, to both of ours, music. Absolutely. And I, I want to talk about music, about music really kind of kind of from three facets. And you're going to be our, our expert in the next uh, in the next segment because you you run a studio that does do. you know traditional musical instruments and, and voice mm-hmm. and also musical theater, which is just sometimes incredibly charming to be able to watch. I always love the way that you cast the little, little ones in some of the pieces. <laughs> um, what we want to talk about it from three ways. So the first one is is music. Is music Im- important to to you know uh, babies and you know like kind of growing kids and then to to teens? And I might say the teen one until we just come back after the break. But let's start with the baby side. You know, 
there is incredibly there's an incredible amount of research that's obviously been emerging For particularly sure. over the last half decade about mm-hmm. the first year of a baby's life right mm-hmm. about the fact that they are sponges and that they are developing neural pathways and you know back in the 90s you know there was reporting that had started to come out that said hey you know uh, if you play Mozart to your kids then they will you know they they could turn out to be geniuses now that's as with most of these things when they come out they, they tend to be hyperbolic and over over the top and of course disproven there was a lot of that stuff about the baby mozarts and the, and the, that type of package of materials i said everybody just back it off just a little bit but what we are learning is the music has an important role to play and it's not just the idea of like enrolling your toddler into music classes although you can do that and it's great For i remember sure. being a jimbery yeah, with jimbo and dancing and all that great stuff but <laughs> but before that it just the idea of, of having them you know playing music around the house and, and getting them into that because music has such a, a strong lift for kids. Absolutely. You've, you've got yeah. some experience with that, yeah? Yeah. I, actually, I have a, a, a cute story that I won't take too long uh, saying, but I uh, my, my youngest son... Uh, he he's four now, but when he was uh, in utero, my got my kids to sing him the same song over and over, uh, and, my, and my husband. We would all sing him the same song in my belly at nighttime as like our nighttime routine. And uh, it was a when Snoop, he was, Snoop Dogg, right? Snoop Dogg? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It was actually a song called I Got, uh, I'll Give You Wings. It's really cute. Aww. Anyway. Uh, anyway, so when he was born, every time he'd cry, we'd try this trick. Okay, let's see if we can sing in the same song and if it calms him down. And like, remarkably, it did. It was wild to me. I'm not kidding you. No, like, no word of a lie. It totally did. And then we also, like, we're big into Coldplay. And at the time, we uh, I was really big into the song Magic, Coldplay. Uh, it has like a heartbeat sound. Right. Uh, at the beginning, it's, it's, it's drum beat, but it has that sort of of rhythmic uh, feel and that was as he progresses in age that was the only song that would calm him down and like you see those videos on YouTube or whatever where the kids are crying and the mom records it and uh, they just instantly stop crying to their favorite song I'm telling you that's what happened with my son Ryan we would put that song on and he would just fall asleep it was amazing so there there is power in music and uh, I, I think it has something to do with just again the rhythm the rhythmic and uh, the comforting sounds and it, stuff well, like that you know they always say the international language I, re- I remember uh, my 18 year old when he was just a couple months old and crying in the back and us mm-hmm. listening to a like it was Saturday night and there was one of the the clubs was playing music on on one of the local radio stations and Rick James Super Freak came on and he stopped crying and I went <laughs> really of all the songs and of course That's you know amazing. and so we we you know we're, tr- we're trying to play like Stevie Wonder everything we could for the next six months and he seemed to grow out of it so it just wasn't this <laughs> thing anymore but that idea that idea that really you know if you're a parent simply playing and singing and dancing with with your kids and obviously you're sitting there going yeah I know that but as much as you can because it we know for example that. The, uh, families that speak and sing to their kids more in their first year are the ones that have you know stronger development of vocabulary and yes, things absolutely. like that. So mm-hmm. I, I think that's a really really great um, way for us to to look at um, f- things from a child's side. When, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about you know stuff when you know enrolling kids into music lessons, and then what happens when your kids maybe aren't into music uh, in the same way that that you're into music or you kind of want them to be into music if they're not really going to get into that. So we're going to come back. In the meantime, if you've got some great stories around music and things like that, we want to hear from you. You know, hit us up at Parents Canada. We're on all those great social media platforms like the Instagram and the Facebook. Kids love when I say it like that. (laughs) Uh, We will be back right after this. You're listening to Parents Canada Talk Radio on News Talk Saga 960. It's Parents Canada Talk Radio. I'm Jason Thompson. I'm Julia Cowie. Hey, you did that great. Thank you. (laughs) We're talking music. And we're not just talking music about, hey, enroll your kids in music lessons. Mm -hmm. We're talking about music, the the lifelong pursuit. And we just finished talking about, you know, toddlers and infants and the role that music has to play. And there's there's a lot of great uh, data on that. There was a a piece I think McMaster did just last year that talks about, you know, when you when you get kids in their first year, um, there's positive benefit for lessons. Uh, six was it six month old infants were randomly assigned to one of two groups. There's a structured music program uh, and finger play and percussion instruments, or a play pl- program. And and what they found is that 12 months that the babies from the first program, the music instead of the play, they displayed uh, advanced brain responses. Mm. And I'm I'm sure there's obviously and again as parents, everything we read should cause us to panic. But <laughs> I, I think what it, it really does is confirm that there's a good strong positive role like. 
really don't just have your kids do music. Let them play too. It's it's an important thing. For sure. But yeah. Let's let's fast forward kind of the next role, which mm-hmm. is the role where kids are going to get into um, more formalized music. And this is an area where you have some strength. So let's again, let's maybe kind of put some stakes in the ground and talk a little <laughs> bit about you know, your musical background and what what you do today with Music in Motion performing our studio. Okay, yeah. Well, I, uh, growing up, I loved to sing. That was uh, kind of my life. You can, (laughs) I think there's some incredible home videos of me just, you know, my dad used to set up the camera as an only child. He used to set up the camera and then I would just perform for hours. It was amazing. Um, Yeah, true. And I I think that that just kind of was such a part of my childhood that it just kind of naturally, I I grew up with it. Um, For me, I have, I guess, uh, the piano side, the the instrument side for me was kind of a, a long journey, if you will. Uh, I feel like the foundation of music was developed through that, uh, the, the the growing up of that. But at the same time, I I was going through a phase, you know, as all teens and, and tweens do. And I loved wearing black nail polish and like really dark eye makeup. And it was amazing. But I had a teacher who uh, didn't support that in me and uh, would make me take my nail polish off every time I came to her house. And so that kind of like set a, a taste in my mouth, I guess, of, uh, you know, um, what classical music was opposed to the kind of music that I was right. super into at the time. But then I, again, I found as I grew up, I found some connections with some great teachers who really inspired me and kind of changed that whole mentality about music, about all the, the different aspects of music and style. So you had a, you had a strong foundation and mm-hmm. then you, you took theater. Was it theater you took at McMaster? Uh, yeah, so I have a degree in th- theater and film. Okay. Uh, so the love, I guess, kind of uh, was inspired and grew in a choir that I was in when I was younger. I had two incredible choir directors uh, who, you know, again, taught us the the foundational core of music, which was right. awesome. Again, changed that whole dynamic for me and how I felt about that. And, and then, then you, you uh, leveraged that into a career now. I so, did, so yeah. We're, give, me, give me some quick highlights so we can get to the music and motion stuff. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, <laughs> Highlight, highlight reel. I, <laughs> I did Joseph uh, with uh, on the tail end of Donny Osmond's run, which what? was yeah, I did. I had no idea. I this. totally did that. Um, so I was in a choir who was a part of that, and uh, we worked with uh, a man called David Burnham. He kind of took over from Donny Osmond, so that was an incredible experience. And again, just kind of solidified the love of the arts as as a whole, music, uh, theater, all of that. And then uh, I went to school. I uh, my husband and I are high school sweethearts, so we, you know. We did that, I know, uh, but uh, <laughs> it's a true story. Uh, we met in grade 10. And so, again, he kind of uh, encouraged me on in this, and I started working in the private sector, teaching, uh, had my kids, and then I just really started pursuing this as, a, as kind of something I wanted as a career. I started taking other courses to upgrade my skills, and then I had the incredible um meeting with my, my now business partner, uh, Lydia Martin. And we now own a company called Music in Motion Performing Arts Studio in Bradford, Ontario. And what's I think what's a, it, wonderful about the studio is it's not just a place to take music lessons and things like that. So let's mm-hmm. let's talk a little bit about, it, it, it's a place where you actually do full-on productions. We do, You know, did yeah. Shrek last year, you did uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast the year before, Beauty it was re- really great. Yeah. I wanna talk a little bit about, you know, I'm a parent, I'm first becoming aware of wanting, you know, my kids are are demonstrating. You know, maybe I'll do it because I'm a parent and actually someone who has kids at your studio mm-hmm. is, you know, my my youngest. You know, she said to me one day, "I want to take piano." sort of thing. And and I thought to myself, that's great. How long is this going to last? So I, what do you say to a parent like that? What do you say to a parent who says, oh, I, I'm going to invest in a drum s- set and the kid's not going to do it in three months? Well, I would say that if your kid is showing interest in any sort of instrument and music as a whole, I say go with it. Because if they're the ones who are bringing it to you, then there's a very good chance that it is something that they're super interested in and that they will run with. I think as a parent... Um, you know, we really need to instill uh, the excitement and the love, but then also the habits, the good positive habits, right? Because right away when you start learning an instrument, 
it's hard. It, everything is hard before it gets easy, right? So uh, I think that it, it, it's challenging for some kids because they want to just play the drums. They don't realize that there is a method. Right. And same with the piano. Uh, there is that you have to learn the foundations first before you start playing Mozart. Mozart. Uh, so I think that really instilling the love, letting them experiment on the piano, but then also saying, okay, let's plot out some time. Let's have a family meeting. Plot out some time where you know these are your nights. Uncompromisable. Life happens. We know, but you have to practice this amount of time and. And make it fun for them. Make right. it not just something uh, that they have to do, but more something that you are sitting with them. My husband, my, my son just started taking piano lessons. My husband plays the guitar. So as he's learning chords, my husband's playing along with him and he makes it super That's fun. That's a really great tip. That idea of, you know, not making it like bitter medicine, you know, mm-hmm. like, oh, you got to practice piano. You know, and I, I know with, with my daughter who is... is you know, she, she I, it's, I become an audience of one. So I'll sit with her, not every time, but I, I think a uh, majority of times to listen to her, sure. uh, to be able to kind of not just give feedback, but to, you know, that idea of, of, of instilling confidence. And you talk a lot about that. Like, that's one of the, my favorite things around uh, your studio is I like to say that it's it's uh, a music studio in wolves in sheep's clothing, which yeah. is the idea is like the music is definitely the outcome, but it really is. And, and you can see it on the walls and blazoned in. It's about building confidence. It's about building habits self-discipline it is about really making adults and that sort of stuff what role do you see music having in doing just that yeah well it's just kind of what you what you're talking about um our, one of our slogans, our many things that we talk about is like, we're more than a production company. We turn possibility into reality. Uh, sound familiar? And I, I really believe that um, instruments, uh, singing, vocal, any sort of music, whether it's uh, musical theater, anything like that, it, it has multi, it's multifaceted in terms of how we, uh, what the kids get from it. Yes, it builds confidence in a lot of ways because they're seeing their hard work right. come to fruition. I, I remember actually with the speech arts, you had one one student a couple of years ago who was amazing, but it he, he I think he was on the spectrum and he actually, it took him a while to kind of warm and that sort of stuff. And just the, you know, you talked about how you had a teacher who kind of, you know, mandated there is one way and you will take off the nail polish. You know, the, the you know, it's like having a good manager, right? It's the ability of yeah. someone who can kind of see where you are, be empathetic, if you sure. will, where we were, yep, and yep. to kind of help draw them out. It's so one of the things that I, I like about uh, about music is is for the, at music and performing arts is that it, it it allows those people who are curious about those things to to be able to find their place to shine. Absolutely. And I really, we see that time and time again at the studio, you know, students, we really try and meet the, the students where they're at. If you try and force them into a mold that they're not ready for, then it becomes a, a, a bigger challenge for them and it makes them want to quit. It makes them feel, it, it, the goal is to bring out their best and to bring out confidence in them. And you know, you were saying that your your daughter uh, confidence is something that she's just you know finding in herself. Everyone comes; it, right. it's like anything in life, right? We all come to different spots in our life at different times, and so there isn't really a mold that you can fit into in that way. We try and find where our students are at, and then help them, encourage them, build their their confidence, their their um, love for the arts, so that it then. Um, just kind of streams out into all other aspects of their lives. You know, this is this is more than just learning how to sing. This is more than just playing the piano. This is more than getting, you know, getting up on stage and singing a song or doing that kind of stuff. It is, it's life. It's training for life, really. Um, write yeah. that one down. Training for life, okay. <laughs> but, you know, this dovetails really nicely into the conversation that we had last week, which was all about extracurriculars. Mm-hmm. And I just, it, it was one of my very favorite conversations in the history of being a parent because it really helped me see extracurriculars differently as a way to see your child. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to unpack who this person is becoming, you know, those extracurriculars can be a way to get there. And you, you talked about that idea of, um, you know, if they come to you, that's a, that's a great thing. And then sometimes, you know, and I want to talk about this after the break is about how, you know, you maybe introduce kids to music and things like that in a way that uh, maybe they're not interested in uh, and getting into the into the music in the first place is how, how you might actually do that. Mm-hmm. But we're going to head to a break. In the meantime, this is one of these conversations that we're going to be able to have all day, every day. <laughs> you are listening to Parents Canada Talk Radio. We are on News Talk Saga 960.
Welcome back to Parents Canada Talk Radio. It's Jason and Julia. We are talking music and off air, you know, you said you have three sons. Are they all are they all in music? They are not. They're sporty kids. They're sporty kids. So they're wa- they're excited to see who's going to be the new captain of the Leafs, right? Uh yeah. Right. Yeah, they Ano-ha- are very excited. Another conversation. Yes, very. Yeah. So, you know, you you said your youngest getting into piano and you what you're going to do a production of Aladdin. So, yeah. My oldest. My oldest. oldest is, your oldest. Yeah, my so oldest. So your choice? Are you shoved him right into that? <laughs> no. No. Trust me. I, I, <laughs> I kind of was nudging a little, uh, uh, maybe a year ago, uh, uh, the possibility of it happening. And they are all very sporty boys. Uh, my oldest is very into baseball. My middle is hockey and baseball. And my youngest, you know, he's still kind of figuring out his thing. He mm-hmm. loves baseball. Uh, he's maybe one that I am, I don't force, but yeah, I bring him to class and, and he enjoys doing a little dance and stuff like that. But it's, it's a good thing. Like parents want to know what's the right age. If you're going to go into more formalized music training, what's the right yeah. age to get into that what, what would you say well we i guess it depends on uh you know kind of how with the interest in your child we offer classes as young as two those classes look different than you know our our theater classes or um anything like that because the the students is more of building a love really right. is is what it's all about right music you have to build that love you can't force it you can't pressure it it's uh so we do a lot of just fun dance, uh, clapping, rhythm, that kind of stuff with the younger ones. As we move forward, you know, it's a lot of prep for, because we're a triple threat school, uh, it's a lot of prep for the the stage and, and just kind of how we perform, not just music, but all the things, right? So how... So knowing that mm-hmm. and knowing that there's, you know, you st- try, try to foster that's part of the answer to the next question I'm going to ask, which is that idea that every parent tears their hair out over, which mm-hmm. is, okay, my kid likes the piano, wants to play the piano, won't practice the piano. So, you know, <laughs> what kind of encouragement, like how what can you give to parents to help them drive that, that story forward? And again, not make it feel like a dirge and right. make it feel more like a positive experience. Yeah, I, I think that uh, knowing for yourself maybe what the positive benefits in music like so there's there's more like we were talking about you know the all of the positive stuff at the beginning but there's like tactile stuff it's uh it's very it, it develops all sorts of parts of the brain so i think kind of having that understanding for yourself kind of getting invested in that so that you can now say to your 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 child okay you know i i understand sometimes we don't want to do some some things i don't want to do some things every every day right, right. but so it's it's saying okay let's just maybe not make it so like you're going to spend 15 minutes at the piano this day maybe m- chunk it down into smaller portions right so okay what can we do in five minutes let's set a timer and that's a big thing me. by the way is because i think that the the old school mentality is got to practice for half an hour to an right, hour right yeah. and we're learning like even in homework you know 20 minute sprints are much more effective than like mm-hmm. two hour two hour like for sure dirges. well think about yourself even as an adult keep, keeping that focus right like, is, i can is, barely is... keep my attention on this conversation <laughs> it's challenging right so <laughs> if you're trying to sit down and really take in what you're learning um it, it can be challenging if you're if you're being forced to right. sit there for that long. Of time. I also I also use recognition because the kids want to feel like they're progressing uh, sure. towards something. So mm-hmm. I'll use like again when I, I listen to the to the young one playing, you know I'll say I I love that and and I will I'll give clear feedback. I'll be like you probably need to practice a little bit more on this one. You know you want to try it again and that's the thing is like you just kind of tuck it in so it's not it doesn't become a timing issue. It just becomes a hey let's do it till we get you know till we feel good about it and, or mm-hmm. until we're bored and you can you can see it and I don't need to sit with her all the time on but you know it's early in the year we're just getting back into piano lessons sure. and be able to remind that sort of stuff <laughs> and, and and then the other thing I find is pacing. So mm-hmm. in group classes so the older one who's a singer is there is another singer at the studio. Who who is a songbird. She's incredible. Mm-hmm. But her work ethic is extraordinary. And so yes. I don't spend yeah. the time talking about my daughter's voice. Mm-hmm. I'd spend her talking about, you know, the way that she she takes, you know, every single moment. It was like uh, there's a goaltender in hockey. His name Dominic Hasek, right, back in the day. And he hated getting scored on in practice. So he'd give his all, right? Mm-hmm. And I, that's why I like about the, this this kid as well. Really does an amazing, amazing job. She truly is a, an embodiment of Mary Poppins when you watch her. It's, it's pretty, something well, really incredible. I, we were talking off air, too, just about, um, you know, the ha- the why. Why are you doing this, right? I think that that really has to be 
a, a question that both the parent and the student ans- answer for themselves, right? Like, well, why are we doing this? Like, what what do, what values do we see in this, and why is it important? And what are you what are you taking from this? Not just the music, but but what is this doing for you as as a person? And I think work ethic yeah. and developing that that discipline, that self discipline, um, all of that kind of stuff is super important. And as parents, we need to now model that for our kids. You know, maybe they are not going to be super motivated at four or five six to jump at that piano maybe they will but we need to say okay like let's let's go sit at the piano I want to see all the things that you learned about today you know I want to see all the things that you learned at your lesson show me what you learned and make it super engaging for them because I I think that they are really excited to think about like the you know any any little kid wants to show you hey mommy look at me look at me you know that that's really important to them to have that sort of recognition so so. let's let's talk about the flip side so let's move on from the formal education so we talked about babies and we talked mm-hmm. about, the, you know, the value of just putting music into their day and their lives. And now we've talked about, you know, kind of growing kids and how to inspire a sense of love for music. And if, if you know, and the outcome of that, right, which is higher brain power, et cetera. Th- there's that third phase, right? And I've got this 18-year-old mm-hmm. who has never, ever, ever expressed any interest in formal music. But I know he likes music. And I know right. this because yeah, yeah. we do a road trip every year somewhere. <laughs> and... You know, he started to curate the playlists. And what shocked me first was what he was playing. It was like mm-hmm. late 70s, late 60s, early 70s prog rock. You know, we were listening to a lot of uh, Queen and CCR and David Bowie and stuff. And I was like, first of all, I'm like, where are you getting this? And of course, kids are getting exposed to this through Spotify and streaming services that are making recommendations. But it, it also gives me a, an opening to have the conversation that two things for teenagers that are really important about music. One is it helps them understand their own identity. Mm-hmm. And that's a really critical thing because it For gives sure. you a gives you a positioning place to talk to them. So, you know, I remember talking to him and and listening to what he wanted to listen to. And I remember uh, we're driving back from Chicago and he put on American Pie and the three kids are in the car. I'm already getting goosebumps because that, that moment was one of those perfect family moments where like the kids by the end are all singing and dad's like just like literally weeping <laughs> uh, because it's so beautiful because it's sure. a moment where we all have that, that sense of joy. Yeah. And then coming out of this and he turns to me and says, what else should I listen to? And, you know, I said, well, let me introduce you to Harry Chapin. Right. And so that that's a great thing. And then then paired with that is I find personally well, I can't play an instrument. I use music as a soundtrack, as a way to kind of get me through in good times and in bad times. Mm-hmm. And so I've identified my musical genres that help me get there. And I'm trying to pass that on to him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's in first year university. It's like when you get stressed, list, make a playlist. Yeah, right. Sure. And make the playlist that, that can, can get you to where you need to go. I mean, any thoughts when you hear all that sort of good stuff? Uh, 100%. I, I completely believe in, in that power. I We are always talking to the kids. Uh, at the studio and my own personal like I, I you know I have three kids but I really have like 150 kids because they are all my kids um, but I, I really believe that in so many ways like think about for yourself and I see it in my kids all the time whenever we're having a bad day yeah music can help you feel how you're feeling and acknowledge how you're feeling inside but then it can also have this incredible ability to turn that feeling around and shake you out of it because I really believe that when if you get stuck in a feeling it's it's not always the best thing right. especially if it's not the most em- empowering exciting feeling there's a there's a analyst who says that uh, nine, feelings last 90 seconds and it's your choice whether or not you turn them into a mood yeah Okay, yeah. So exactly. So if you, again, you can listen to a song, feel how you're feeling, cry it out, do whatever you need to do. But then if you are, if you have, I have a playlist, I call it Boss, because it's, you know, I, you, you. why not, right? Uh, but it just is all music that makes me want to dance and move and shake off whatever it is that I've brought to my day that's really not imp- like motivating me forward. So I really believe that if you're stuck in a place, like we teach this a lot of acting, right? Your body has a positioning when you're sad, right? So your, your shoulders are hunched, all of that kind of stuff. But if you can get up and shake that off, like literally like the Taylor Swift song. Sure. Then, is, that, is that a Taylor Swift song? Uh, shake it off. No. Okay. All right. okay. I... <laughs> uh, yeah. If, if you can do that, then it really does. It, it empowers you to change your mood and, it, and to change your physical state. And I think that that propels you forward. So I really like it's funny that you say this. I, I'm going to. 
uh, I'm just going to tell you a quick story. Uh, we do a lot of like carpool karaoke with my kids, and we also do a singing Christmas wait, card. Wait, wait, wait. Do you, do you know there's a thing? They brought out a carpool karaoke microphone so no. you can actually do it, pass it around in the car. And apparently, I know, I'm watching Kelsey in our booth, and she's like, what? It's That's amazing, okay. apparently. The reviews <laughs> on it are, are like, this should be a piece of junk. It's awesome. So, no there you way. Go. I need that in my life. But no, this isn't your jam. Oh, okay. No, I'm very excited about this. Uh, this might be a Christmas present for me. I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, anyway, so you do a lot of carpool karaoke. We do. And, uh, you know, I think that it's really fun. Like, my husband and I, music has always brought us together throughout our relationship. We've been married for 16 years. Whenever, you know, like, I, we're, we're literally passing each other on the road. We're waving, and I'm going to work, and he's going home. Uh, fortunately, I have the incredible blessing of living with my mom and dad we live in the same house so we kind of have that crossover where it's like okay who's got what all of that kind of <laughs> stuff right but uh, I think when we when we when we are feeling disconnected music helps us to feel connected um, together in our marriage but then with my kids uh, it really brings us together in that way and it, and I really I, I going back to what you were saying before you know it, it does kind of present these magical moments where uh, we can choose songs that we all think are fun and and perform them, sing them, uh, learn them together. And it just, it, it brings this element of, again, it is kind of magical, it's fun um, into our family. So. So, so when we're looking at this, I, I love this, like the, the kind of just sum up here, this idea mm-hmm. of like when you have kids at any age, but truly when they're starting to get that uh, that identity, you know, using music as, as a great meeting place and a bond, you know, if you find you're struggling with your teenagers, not a bad place to kind of meet with each other. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I think that idea of of counseling them that, you know, anxiety and depression and, you know, even kind of lighter versions of that sort of thing in mood are realities. Stress is a reality. For sure. And this is a is, is a strategy that you can use that can help, um, you know, gloss things over. Listen, I'm in the middle of a, a very hard run of work right now, and which is what, probably why I'm sick. Mm-hmm. But I know that I'm using music as a way to get through in the days. And I know that when I was driving in here, I was blasting the Frightened Rabbit on the way in to make me feel good, <laughs> which is weird because they're a really downcast and sad band. But anyway, so yeah. let's pause here to get mm-hmm. into our last break. But when we come back, I, I want you to share... The story of what you wouldn't would would bristle at if your kids told you that they wanted to <laughs> listen to that. So we're going to come back to that. Okay. For now, you're listening to Parents Canada Talk Radio on News Talk Saga Nine Sixty. <laughs> You're listening to, to Parents Canada Talk Radio. I am here with... Julia Cowie. And I'm Jason Thompson. And we spent the last uh, hour just chatting about music and, and the role music has to play. And I, again, I really wanted to stress the idea of not just saying, hey, you know, here's how to get through if your kid wants to play the oboe. <laughs> it's, you know, it's here how you, here's how you fuel a lifelong love of music and the kind of impact. And we talked about, you know, as a baby is mm-hmm. that, you know, neural pathways kind of growing and that sort of stuff, particularly in that first year. Mm-hmm. You know, as kids getting into, uh, from the age of two to 88, the idea of picking up an instrument. I, I've been thinking, you know, years ago, I, I, I took piano and I, I, I had a camera. And so I was 35 years old and I thought, I have to pick one of these. So today I'm a professional photographer, <laughs> but I miss it. I really do miss it. I, I yeah. you know, I, I've always had a, 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 just an absolute adoration for, for piano. Larry Gowan, I, as a kid, you know, I listened to the worst pop music in the world and Gowan was like high up on that list, but I still have a real soft spot for listening to, to his music and, and all that sort of stuff. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what we like our kids to listen to and mm-hmm. what they don't. So we talked about is you asked me is there anything that if your kids were listening to it you would you would kind of hold up the stop sign and yeah. say that's an issue. Yeah. And then I said to you, well I I actually kind of hate musicals. You did. I did. Oh, I, and yes. it's, I know. I know. I know. I heard, heard a little. It, and and the truth is is I you know I I mostly hate musicals, but but I also recognize that I have two daughters who adore it. You know, we went right. to New York City on a on yes. a uh, road trip. You know, what are we going to do in New York City? We're going to do all the stuff Dad wants to. Do? No, they got they were at Beetlejuice, they were at Mean Girls, I they know. were standing you know backstage waiting for the stars to come out to get their signatures Amazing. and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then they came over and they said, "Oh, we love that musical. Can we listen to it in the car?" And Dad was like, "No, absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Here's some <laughs> headphones." No. 
I'm trying to strike you know a what? balance. It's a compromise. It I'm is a balance. I a like balance. it. You know, I think you're doing. But you don't want to dissuade them of that. But no. what about you? You know, you're a person who is music yeah. by trade. Like, is there mm-hmm. anything you wouldn't let your like, kids listen to, or that you would say, "Hey, I got an issue with this"? Yeah. Well, you know, I I think that I we encourage all styles of music in our house. We do. I think the only thing is, I truly believe that the words that you're listening to uh, can get in your head a little. And I know that as you grow, y- you are, it's emotional intelligence, it's all of that kind of stuff, knowing what's 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 good and what's not. But I think as we talked about before, uh, music is very powerful in, in how you're feeling. It can- I, I feel like you're teeing us up for something. Here. Uh, well, you know what? I, I think that th- for me, it would be like hardcore rap, like gangsta rap. I don't know. Like, just, you know, I feel like sometimes, and I know I'm going to get some backlash maybe on this, but I really do feel like sometimes some of the things that I hear these men rapping about uh, maybe aren't the values that I want my boys to, you know, carry on in their everyday life. Do you think that's exclusive to rap? Like, for me, it's like... No, no, that's true. That's the point. There's a lot of music that that might cross that line, but I use that as the opportunity to have the conversation. We were talking about, uh, what's it called, the mixtape? the Hamilton mixtape. Hamilton mixtape. Yeah. There's a song on there by Benjamin Franklin mm-hmm. by the Decembrists mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's F-bomb after F-bomb and it's, <laughs> and it's hilarious. And I, my eight-year-old in the back seat, she, if she wants to sing it, in the back seat, that's the rule. You can't be singing it as you're walking down the hallway to school. But because I try to, I, I have the George Carlin kind of concept, which is no bad, no, no bad words, just bad thoughts and mm. the difference between the two. And I try to mm-hmm, kind of mm-hmm. really instill that in them. So, sure. you know, caustic kind of music that's not going to contribute to them in a positive way. But it, you know, in a way, and this is what we talked about before is it, it to me, it signals an opportunity for conversation. And that's, right? that's just it. You know, like if, if my kids ended up, you know, loving that genre, then that would be something that we, I would be like, okay, put it on in the living room. Let's listen to this and like, let's unpack it a little. Like, hey, I can get on board with any style of music. It's more what they're saying. That's that's all it is for me. And I, have, I, you, have you crossed any of this yet? Like have you, have your kids said, here's something I want to listen to? Uh, you know what? My kids got really kind of into like, Dance electronica, totally the, like big EDM that, kids. I, I yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really get it. I don't know where it came from. But for me, I get, I yeah, I went through a lot of phases growing up. I think I was really on a journey of self discovery. I was, I was really been like, like the really, Smiths. You were into the Smiths. <laughs> I can tell already. I, I, you know, I explored it all. I really yeah. loved all. all so you go. So you're music. you're saying is next summer you're going to Ibiza with the kids? You know, <laughs> to, uh, listen to the. the I'm not so music? sure about that one, but uh, I, you know, it's definitely. Something that when they started listening to this kind of music, I was like, okay, you know, I've been here once. My husband was, you know, we we fell in love over like crazy screamo rock music. Okay, he, like, legit. He was a drummer in a band, and of course and he that, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is I, I like where you're going with this. This idea of using first of all. Find out where your kids' music is so that you can meet them where they are, right? Because yeah, the thing sure. is, it's harder, particularly with teenagers, to get them to cut, to cross. But, you know, my, my son is not listening to my amazing music. He's listening to his <laughs> amazing music. And, <laughs> yeah. and so I'm I'm meeting him where he is. Like, mm-hmm. And this crosses all media. Like a couple months ago, he's, he really is, is into kind of Japanese culture. He really likes anime. And, you know, I said... Help me get into this, like, because yeah. you would explain some of these, and they're just incredible, like, just mm-hmm. a, a totally different way of storytelling than than what I'm used to. Sure. So he, we sat down, we started listening, watching something called Cowboy Bebop, which has been transformative. First of all, I get my son to sit on the couch with me for hours at a time, which is impossible. But secondly, the fact that I respect his stuff it allows us to open up the conversation. And then I do the dad thing a little bit, which is like, hey, wh- what's going on over here? Right? Yeah. I know what's going on over here, but <laughs> sure. you know, I want him to explain it to me because then I, I get to go into his world a mm-hmm. little bit. And I love, I think music's a great way to kind of in- inspire that going forward. My, my eight-year-old, you know, she's, she introduced me to this artist, Perry Grip, who I introduced you to. Is yes, this, yes. this, I think he was like this commercial artist and it was pretty amazing you know like every single song you know like space unicorn or uh cat flushing a toy like the, the most bizarre wonderful <laughs> yeah, thing yeah. and they're earworms they're really really easy to get into so again we found a place where we could meet mm-hmm. i love that i i think that's you know you music is a, a universal language it, it really it really I've never heard that is. before nobody's ever said that 
Sorry? Nobody's ever said that. Universal music is universal. I'm making fun of you. Uh, you know what? I Just because I like it's a, on a cat poster doesn't mean I can't say it. I, I don't know. I, I feel like that's legit. That's legit, don't you think? Yeah. I, th- listen, it truly is. And I think that the thing that we've learned from today together and the kind of the thing we've posited is, is that music as a universal language, not just as a, hey, isn't it great to bop along, is if you're a baby, you know, like this is a great way for parents and, and kids to bond and for to grow those neural pathways. If you're... You know, you have somebody who's seven or eight years old, which is where I want to finish today is to show you the real impact of this, which is on that trip to New York City. Um, I'm I'm in the tr- uh, train station getting tickets for the Statue of Liberty. Mm-hmm. And off in the distance, I hear Pachelbel's Cannon. Mm. And it's the most wonderful thing because I love that. Everybody loves that piece, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a cliche, but I get it. And I hear it and I think to myself, oh, wow, that's amazing. And then I, I get the tickets and I walk over to my kids and it's one of my kids sitting at the piano playing it. Like I'm already getting kind of well up. My eight-year-old is playing this because she played it in the recital last year. Yes, and that, to me, that's where I saw the true power of what music can be. And right. I'm going to end that here. I'm yeah. going to end us here to get us, because again, we could probably go on and talk. We could, for the I, yeah. We're going to encourage you to tune in every week from uh, 11 to 12 on Wednesdays. We've got a whole bunch of really interesting topics and some pretty heavy ones. If you've listened to some of the past episodes, we talked about postpartum depression. We have some really good ones coming up and I, I think they are definitely worth listening to. Mm-hmm, for sure. You, if, first of all, thank you so much for thank being you. here today. Thank you. I hope we get to me. have you come back and talk about I something that's not that. even music. Yeah. All right. Julia, yeah. You did your, mus- your debut on radio Yay. was fantastic. Thank and to everyone else, thanks for listening to Parents Canada Talk Radio on News Talk Saga 960.